Uh, Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and uh, I'm bringing you back right at the end of our uh, uh, contracts for, for hay. Uh, we are on field 71, and the first thing I want to tell you is that everything you see on this field, all these bales, were done by a worker without my help at all. So I have stumbled upon something here that is pretty doggone effective. Um, it's not perfect because there, you know, there's there's stuff left over that I'm going to have to, you know, go over myself to fix. But I mean, this worker did this entire field, almost this entire field. Well, let's just say he did about ninety percent of it, eighty-five to ninety percent of it, without me doing anything at all. So here's here's the here's what happened here. Um, I basically installed the Vicon, you know, fast baler, and I leased it. It's very expensive. That sucker's over $100,000 to buy it. And I put my, you know, my my uh, lizard rake on front of it. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, man, that guy somehow managed to, whoops, uh, somehow managed to get himself. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Oh, I'm seeing everything now. Oh, man. Okay. Um, we're going to just kind of pretend like that never happened. <laughs> but look at this, you guys. You got it. This is pretty, this is pretty significant, man. This worker did this almost this entire field without me doing anything. I mean, I wasn't even using follow me. I basically just turned him loose and let him do his thing. And that is pretty doggone impressive, if you ask me. So here's what I did. Basically, I put the fast baler on the, on the back. And again, for those of you who don't know what this means, basically the fast baler is capable of wrapping the small round bales without stopping. And and the way that that works is that it has it has two chambers. It's got a front chamber here, and then a back chamber. So what happens is when the bale itself is uh, full, it pops out of here into this second chamber so that it can keep going and then the second chamber pops it out here and then this rolls it and wraps it up so it actually works quite well uh even you know even if i was just going to do this myself it would be nice because then i can just bail without stopping at all but here's the thing that makes this work it's this guy here because when you put this on the tractor the worker thinks that it's windrowing it doesn't have it. It doesn't know that it's bailing. It thinks that it's windrowing, so it just keeps going, and it, it works amazingly well. I was just really surprised with how well it works because my original plan, if you guys watched the last episode, um, my original plan was to use the follow me mod and have it follow behind me while I cut the grass. But I didn't do that. I just cut the grass. Well, I had a worker cut the grass because I had so many other things going on at the same time. You know, we did a bunch of harvest contracts, more hay contracts, that kind of thing. And so I just turned the worker loose, and it I'm impressed. I gotta say, I'm really impressed with how good of a job that it actually did. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys this in action when we do our own fields next month in November. Here, let's turn this off for now. And you know, I could even, actually now that I think about it, I could even turn it loose. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's do this. Let's go. Excuse me. Go back over to this side of the field. And um, for some reason, and I don't quite understand why it did this, but for some reason it stopped right here, and then it turned around and went back <laughs> and started back over there again. I don't know why it did that. But um, here, let's just do this. Let's set it loose right here and let's see how much of this it could do before. Because I think what happens is it kind of knows and, you know, knows, right, that there's bailing going on too. And I think sometimes it maybe gets a little bit confused. I'm not really sure. But I have to tell you, I mean, for, for the worker to do that much of this field all by itself without any assistance whatsoever for me is pretty doggone impressive. And it's very... You know very useful for sure okay so anyway let's lower that and let's just see what he does he or she 
Okay, you know what? I think the problem here is that it's too close to the tree. So let's let's move it out this way. Maybe that's what confused it the first time. I'm not really sure. Okay, so let's start it up again. All right, now let's see what it does. Now this the, this baler is really in terms of speed, it's really slow. It only goes like five, you know, four or five miles an hour. But that's okay, man. I mean, if you can get the worker to do this without any intervention from the player, it's it, it doesn't matter that it's going a little bit slower. And I'm guessing it probably does that because it's, you know, it's just trying to make sure that it can get the bale. Yeah, see, that's the front chamber, and then it pops it into the back chamber. So it probably goes slow enough to where it doesn't, you know, so it can keep up with it, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. But it's actually working now. I think, yeah, I think the trees must have confused it or something. Let's just see what it does when it gets to the end of the field. This is really cool, though, man. Because <laughs> I don't, even, I, I thought I was going to have to use follow me to get this to work, and I don't even have to use follow me. This is great. So it's going to stop right there. It doesn't really like to do the headlands. However, we could try and turn it loose on the headland after we point it the other direction and see what it does. Okay, so yeah, it thinks it's done here. Um, so let's do this. Let's get it lined up for this windrow here. All right, I'm going to have to do the first part because I turned too sharply here. One thing about this lizard rake, it's just amazing, but you can't turn too sharp or you, you know, you miss the windrow. Okay, let's see if it can finish out the rest of this. But this is really cool because, you know, if I can get this guy to do, you know, 80, 80 to 90 percent of a field without any intervention from me, you know, I have to do a little bit of cleanup afterwards. It's well worth it. Absolutely well worth it. Okay, so it didn't, it didn't finish it. And the reason it didn't finish it, because remember, it thinks that it's windrowing. It doesn't know that it's also bailing. <laughs> so we're kind of... We're kind of, uh, you know, faking it out a little bit here. All right, now let's do this. Let's go up to the headland and then turn it loose after we turn it the other direction and just see what happens here. I'm going to get this little bit up here first. But I mean, you know, even the, this baler would even be good for me just to use because, again, you don't have to stop. It's like using a square baler. It's just, you just go. It's really cool. So we'll get the stuff in the corner here. Okay, so we got that done. Let's get this little bit right here, too. All right, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it loose on the headland and just see if it'll if it'll go all the way around it or not. I'm not sure if it will. But even if I can't get it to do any of the rest of this, it's still it did enough to make this worthwhile. Oh, I'll turn a little too sharp there. Okay, so let's get it straightened out and we'll even bring it into the field a little bit more because it is kind of on the outskirts a little bit. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, you know what though? Because these windrows are broken up. Yeah, it's... Mm, well, okay, let's just see what it does. No, nah, it stops there, okay, because it's not one solid row. Okay, that makes sense. I understand why it's doing that. All right, well, I'm going to have to, you know, do the rest of this, but that's fine. Again, like I said, I mean, 
It did the vast majority of this field without any help for me at all. Pretty impressed, I gotta say. We'll see how it does on our fields in next month, too. But anyway, um, I'm gonna finish this up here and then I'll bring you guys back uh, for an end of October update and then we'll we'll go on into November and proceed from there. So I'll see you guys in a little while. All right, guys, I am back. Um, it is still October the 1st. However, it is, <clears throat> excuse me, the next day in real life. Actually, it's two more days since I recorded the first part of this episode. And before I do anything else, I would just like to wish my dad a happy birthday. Uh, so this video will come out on September the 29th. And uh, it is my, my dad's birthday. So, dad, happy birthday. Love you, man. You're the best dad ever. Uh, so... <laughs> Because dad, dad watches these videos, and uh, so yeah, I just wanted to wish him a happy birthday. So everybody leave a comment and wish old guy senior a happy birthday. Okay, anyway, <laughs> the reason I'm bringing you back uh, right now, as opposed to finishing out October, is because in the sales, there is another Stroutman Aperion 3401 trailer for 67% off. It's got 34 months on it, but you know, for something like this, that's it hardly matters. Um, and I don't think I can pass this up because we already have one of these and it's a great trailer. It has 52,000 uh, um, liters of capacity. And um, yeah, it's a really good trailer. And you'll notice too that I have $164,000 and that is because I did a couple of really big uh, sugar beet contracts. And the reason I did the sugar beet contracts, and yes, it took me a very long time to do, is because... Um, I, w I then kept the extra sugar beets and I have them in the train station because we are probably, I'm not promising, but it is my tentative plan to buy a sugar mill um, at the end of the year when we when we get all of our money, among other things. And so if that happens, then we have some, some sugar beets to put right on in it. Uh, nevertheless, all that to say, I got two wimpy trailers with the contract. You know, I borrowed the equipment and... Um, you know, and, and so I ran my my current uh, Stroutman that I had to help, you know, make the speed up the process. So now having two of these is good. Now, the other reason why we're going to buy this, well, here, let's just buy it, um, is because then we can dedicate the the little Brantner trailer solely to a manure trailer. Because it always kind of bugged me a little bit that we were using that trailer for manure and also for animal feed and stuff like that. Not that it really matters, but you know, it kind of does. All right. So let's see, let's just go with design one. It doesn't cost it any more money. It just adds these little rake thingamadoodles at the back, uh, wheel setup standard. We can't even ch change that anyway. We, well, actually, can we change it if we change the wheel brand? I don't know. doesn't matter. Just go with whatever. Um, does that add more money? No, it doesn't. Okay. BKT Michelin. Let's go with Michelin wheels, because why not, right? <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, this I, this is a really good buy, and uh, we can definitely afford it. We're not passing it up. So now we have two, not one, ladies and gentlemen, but two Stroutman Aperion 3401 trailers. 52,000 liters, great trailers. Okay, nice. So that is going to come in handy. All right, so now that that is taken care of, we are indeed going to go to the end of October. There isn't really anything else for me to do. Um, I've done lots of contracts. You know, we did hay contracts. We did harvesting contracts. No, we're not doing a plowing contract. We did um, cultivating contracts. And, yeah, we have made quite a nice little chunk of change, as you can see, in the upper right-hand corner. Um, so let's finish out the month, and then I'll bring you back on October 3rd, and we'll go through our ledger and then advance into the next month. So I'll see you at the end of the month. All right, guys, it's October 3rd, end of the month. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I have a little, you know, we have some milk now, and uh, this is still the best time to sell milk. So let's just go grab what we have and sell that. And it's uh, right here at Mama Joe's Market on our very own property. Oh. So we'll do that, and uh, we have some eggs to pick up, and I think that's really about it. We don't need to feed the cows. We'll need to feed them tomorrow, uh, but they're good for one more day. Chickens are fine. There's no more contracts to do. So, yeah, we'll just go squeeze a couple more pennies out of the out of our milk here and then uh, wrap things up for October. And then next month, in, set, or in November, we have to do our fourth hay cutting.
Okay, let's see how much money we make here. Oh, almost five thousand more dollars. There you go. Not too bad. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna put the this away and grab those three full pallets of eggs, put those in the warehouse, and then we'll be done with October. Let's go ahead and put our new trailer in the barn too. I'm just going to park it butt to butt with this other one and then the flatbed, little flatbed unfortunately is going to have to come back outside again. Oh, we need to repair this too. Let's get that done. Okay, the new old trailer's undercover, right next to its buddy. Okay, so let's take a look at our money for October. We purchased the trailer. We spent 7,500 bucks on vehicle repairs, $10,000 on leasing costs, um, the, yeah, the Baylor, the fast Baylor. That's what that's from. I was going to say, what did I lease? But we leased the Baylor. Uh, property maintenance, 556, $138 mysterious money. We sold $23 worth of bales from the contracts. We sold almost $5,000 of milk. Um, fuel costs, uh, 1786 Water costs for the cow barn, 280 We made $8,255 on the harvests that we did. We made a whopping, or grossed a whopping $144,365 on contracts. That is, <laughs> that's a lot of money. Not we we did a little bit better in July, but that's still pretty pretty doggone good. Uh, let's see, we paid out $22,580 to workers. That, that's that was really high there, but I just used the workers a lot for the sugar beets primarily. Um, and then this is from the the train station. Uh, I think that's just from the train station. So we are uh, ending the month with a uh, cash on hand of $84,404. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Um, this is what we netted, and this is what we're ending with, $137,631. So pretty good. We're, we're in pretty good shape right now uh, with money. All right, guys. So uh, next month will be November 1st. We'll have our own hay, our, our fourth cutting of our own hay. We'll have to feed the cows uh, eggs as long as this thing doesn't get weird on me. We will sell our eggs in um, November because that's the best time to sell them. So we'll get that going, make a little bit of money off of those. And I think that's primarily what's going to happen in November. Okay, so I'll see you in November. Okay, welcome to November, ladies and gentlemen. We have a planter for sale. We have a an auger wagon for sale uh, looks like it's more silage based and then we also have the silo king this was actually for sale yesterday too but wouldn't even consider buying this because it's even lower capacity than what we have even though it is a self-propelled uh, one there okay so let's take a look and see what we have for contracts um, okay those are all low-level harvesting contracts none of which I will take See if there's anything else. Yeah. Um, what is this? This is cotton in field 42. Um, that might be worth doing. Where's field 42 at? Eh, 
It's close to the hook, close to the, the house. And we would make, um, how much would we make on it? We'd make almost $3,000, but I would definitely borrow their stuff. And then we would, um, yeah, we'd have to take 614 off, but then we would make a little bit more money from the cotton sale. So we would probably make, I'm guessing around 3,500 bucks to, to do this harvest. Is it really worth our time? Yeah, I think it probably is. That's not a huge field. Yeah, that's probably worth doing. Okay, plus what I could do is I could wait to, to turn it in and, and then have access to this tractor if we wanted to use it maybe for something else too. Um, so let's borrow these items and we'll do that. But for the rest of these, I mean, that's cotton on 22. That's sunflowers on 60. Nah, they're just... They're not going to be worth it. Okay, so we'll have that one cotton uh, contract to do. And we've got a, a little John Deere 6110M. And this is actually a, a manual transmission tractor. Uh, we have, I believe we've used that before. Okay, so we got that done. Of course, we have to do our own hay. Um, let's take a look at our critters. So the chickens are fine. Uh, I'm going to wait until November 3rd to sell eggs, so that way we can get a few more eggs from the chickens. And then the cows are, yeah, the cows are very low. We need to feed the cows today, um, here on November 1st. Greenhouses should be in pretty good shape overall. Yeah. We're going to need to put some water in them uh, probably next month, uh, but they'll be they'll be fine for now. So we're in good shape with that stuff. All right, so... The cotton harvest, I'm probably just going to do that off camera. You guys have seen me do cotton now, and it won't take that long. Uh, but what I do want to do is I want to see how well our worker can handle a baling. Now, we, um, we kind of saw how well they did on Field 71 when I just let them bail without me there. What I might want to try this time, though, is follow me, at least on our big field, and see if they do any better with follow me. Um, fact, if we're going to use follow me, let's use it, right? So what I will do is I will do the mowing, and I will have the worker follow behind me. So let's get them set up. Um, oh, right, we're going to have to lease that the fast baler again. Um, yeah, let's lease it again. I'm not, I haven't fully decided if I'm going to, um, I'm going to buy it because it's very expensive. So until, we, until I decide that it only makes sense for us to continue leasing it. and maybe it'll even come on sale. I mean, that would be the ideal thing, right? Um, so let's go to Baylor's and we're going to go to the Vicon fast bail. Yes. These suckers, $110,000. Um, you can also make it a, a Vernalin too, if you wanted to. I don't know why that matters, but maybe some people prefer Vernalin. I actually kind of like the colors a little bit better on Vernalin, but it's it doesn't really matter. Um, so okay, so let's lease this. It's going to cost us fifty six hundred bucks to lease, but it's fine. It'll be worth it. All right, and then we will um, let's get the new Holland set up on that tractor, and we'll get a worker going inside of it. We're fully repaired and almost fully fueled, so we're in good shape there. I'd consider using the little tractor, the John Deere, for this, but I don't know if it's got enough horsepower. Um, let's see, this is... If it's a 6110M, I think it has 110 horsepower. Small tractors. John Deere, 6M series, 6110M, M for manual. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay, so it's got 130 horsepower. All right, what does the Vicon require? I mean, if we can put the wear and tear on somebody else's tractor. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible, but 
hey, they, they loaned it to us. They didn't specify we could only use it for cotton. Uh, oh, see, yeah, that requires 150 horse, though. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it could do it, but it wouldn't do it at its absolute best capacity. Bio baler. Oh, I think this is for poplar. Yeah, yeah, this is for making poplar bales. Okay, so, yeah, I don't... I'm still kind of testing this out, so I, I don't want to I don't want the worker to be gimped by not having enough horsepower. So we'll just use the New Holland. Okay, um, so we want to make sure unfold baler. Yeah, okay. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to press right control F. Waiting due to detected near collision, but who's he following though? I guess he's following me. Usually it it says it'll it'll say, you know, following Crone Big M or something. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, I don't think that worked. So let's go back to here. Waiting due to detected near collision. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. So let's just line it up. All right. Now we'll do right control F. Yeah. See how it says Crone Big M there? So now I know he is following me. And then if we wanted to, um, wait, is he, hold on. There was supposed to be some other settings in there, but I'm not seeing them, so I don't know. Let's just hop in now and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem to be working. I don't know why. It's like I'm, ac I'm accidentally turning it back off or something. Have to be closer. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Not sure. Let me mess with this, and then I'll bring you back once I get it working. Okay. Now it's working. I think. I think there might have been too much stuff around the. The worker, and they were kind of getting confused. Because once I got it out in the open here, then it it worked. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of go around our biggest field here and have the worker follow and just see how they do. I'm not expecting them to do 100% good job. What I'm, what I'm really trying to find out here or ascertain is... Do they do a better job when they're following me as opposed to using the big V-rake, um, you know, like before? So that's really what I'm trying to figure out here. So it probably would be best to just kind of start this direction. And I do need to also... Start the baler up because they won't do that by themselves. Um, actually, I guess I have to get them out of there first. 
Okay, now, control F, and it's got the little line there, and the worker's in there, okay. Okay, let's just see what happens. I'm pretty sure I can go quite a bit faster than he can, so I don't want to get too far ahead of him or I think that causes him to reset. But hey, so far so good, eh? It's making the first bail. I'll probably have to do the really odd shaped fields, but that's okay. If I can get them, if I can, you know, get them to do the bulk of the cutting, you know, automating the bulk of the cutting, then it's worth it. All right, let's see what, let's see what they do there, because I did some weird stuff there. Yeah, he's, he's he's like following almost my exact line, which is basically what it, what he's what he does, right? That's not bad though, actually. He didn't get all of it, but he got a lot of it. Okay. I wonder if he'll back up there because I did. No, doesn't look like it. Okay, I'm <laughs> I'm making a terrible line myself because I'm I'm busy watching him. I gotta say though, this is actually working pretty doggone well. Actually, very well. All right, let's see what happens over here. This is gonna be a weird spot, so I'm gonna cut him some slack and do. A, a more gentle curve there, and I'll, I'll come back and take care of that little patch myself later. We want to get a little bit of this meadow grass, but I don't want to get too far out into it. Okay, let's just see what he does. Man, I have to say, you guys, this is working exceptionally well. I mean, that is not bad at all for going around a corner and, and up a steep hill, too. I'm impressed, I have to say. All right, well, here's the thing. I am going to um, keep working on the hay. I'm, a ba I'm basically basically going to see how much I can do with with this setup. Um, and I'm you know again I'm expecting things not to work super well when we get into to the irregular shaped fields, but on the other hand, you know he might be able to to keep up with me pretty well overall. And I will bring you back when uh, when we're finished, or at least when we're close to getting finished and kind of give you a report on, on how well the, the worker did. So yeah, I'll see you uh, when the hay's cut. All right guys, back with an update. Uh, just to let you know, uh, this is about as far ahead as I was able to get from him before he finally stopped, which is quite impressive. Um, that, that's quite a long ways uh, ahead. So, you know, based upon this, looks like you can get, well, you know, based upon the width of this particular field, or the length of it, I can get about two rows ahead of him. Um, so that's very interesting to know. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to... Here, let's just cut the power there. And I'm, I'm going to get him caught up myself. Uh, but now I know, you know, about how far ahead I can get. Um, so, yeah, this is for science, man. 
We're performing scientific tests here. Uh, but so far, yeah, he's, he's done an, an amazing job. So seven miles an hour isn't too bad. Sometimes it'll pop up to eight, but on a flat surface with the New Holland tractor, um, you know, considering we don't have to stop, that's not so bad. It just bumped down to six there. We might be going up a little bit of an incline, but it seems to average out to seven for the most part. So I can't complain about that. I'm pretty sure we're going to be buying this baler, guys. What I might do, though, is I might wait until um, uh, May. No, not May, March, which will be our first hay cutting. And, um, you know, because it might come on sale. And if it doesn't, then I'll probably just buy it at that point. Okay, let's put you back on follow. Yeah. Draws the little line there. Okay. Oh, I got back in the tractor. I was going to say, why isn't that starting? Okay, is he still following? Well, it's flashing some kind of collision. Oh, yeah, he is. Okay. Excellent. All right, let's do this. Jesse was born on a winter's night in the middle of a storm. The road was blocked, so Jesse was born in this old house. was magic in the world Her laughter traveled well across those hardwood floors God knows we didn't have much But in a way, you know we had it all She grew up in a breath or two, she was on her way out the door While her clothes were dried on a line outside the porch With that worn-out truck and a lot of hope She left one Thursday morn Like the storm she came with, never let her go Sir! 
will be there 